you know, I, I sort of foolishly thought that, you know, doing a bike was going to be a very easy thing because, you know, how hard can it be? It's just a triangle, right? Built one, rode it, and it was shocking. It was absolutely shocking. It was rubbish. <laughs> and I, I realised right there and then that I've actually started something here that's going to be very hard. My name's John Bailey, I'm the Managing Director of Factor Bikes UK. Um, I'm the original founder of the brand um, way back in 2007. I was the owner of a company called Biathlon Systems. <coughs> and we were primarily a, um, a supplier of hardware, both in electronics, composites, um, software, um, and all kinds of clever things, predominantly for Formula One um, and for aerospace, uh, mainly Rolls-Royce and Airbus. They were, our, they were sort of our key marketplaces. That meant that my engineers were coming in every day and doing, you know, to a great, little, great extent, doing the same thing over and over again. And I felt that there was something that we could do that would be more interesting, but at the same time, showcase our, all of our in-house abilities, because you know we did do everything in-house. Obviously, we were supplying vehicles, whether it be aircraft or you know, uh, racing cars, high-end road cars, that kind of thing. So it was, it was a natural thing to do a, a vehicle, if you like. There was a few keen cyclists in the team. So I thought, right, we're going to do a bike. We'll do one bike. We'll demonstrate what we can do, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at what the bike market is doing now, and try and sort of you know, be a little bit more um, uh, adventurous, if you like. The best people to come and challenge uh, a marketplace or an industry is somebody who's never been in it before. That's a very arrogant view, you know, to think that you can walk in and do something better. That wasn't what we were. We weren't saying that. We were saying we come in and do something different. There was no real intention of selling one. It was a, an engineering exercise. There was an appetite for something different out there, you know, in the cycling world, and that you know, people were prepared to stick their neck out a little bit and try, try and do something new. So, yeah. We created a few teams, a mechanical design team, obviously, for the, for the bike, and the electronics hardware and software, uh, and then just pulling that all together. Um, so, we created a space, and, and initially it was a, a kind of a part time project. So, you know, the guys would be allotted two or three hours a day, maybe, or you know, an accumulation of hours per week, just to start jotting things down and scheming things up. So we had everything we needed to do the whole bike in-house. We were going to manufacture this using aerospace grade materials and uh, aerospace methods of manufacture, so you know, very expensive tuning, different kind of ladder system to what's currently used in the mainstream, all kinds of very complicated, difficult problems that we'd have to solve, which we knew we were going to get into, but that was all part of the showcasing of our abilities. We're going to do this. We need to have some kind of uh, benchmark. We need to understand what, like, what's the best out there at the moment, and what do we need to do to kind of at least be as good as that. Back then, Savella was, you know, in the eyes of my colleagues and, and myself, probably one of the best bikes to go to. And you know, oddly enough, it was a bike that Rocky Tellis had manufactured for Savella, so it's quite interesting. I mean, I'm no cyclist. I mean, I get that up on the table right now. I'm not a cyclist like you would imagine. I'm a cyclist. And our factory's on on the top of a small hill, you know, north of here, north of there is no such thing as a hill really. But anyway, there was a small incline. So I got on this thing and rolled down the hill. And I didn't really make anything of that because I just rolling down the hill, turning around and came up the hill and suddenly realised that actually what we're gonna try and do is gonna be very, very difficult. Because this thing just flew up there. I've never been on a bike and gone up a hill, flew up this hill, I thought, right, I've actually started something here that's gonna be very hard. That kind of changed my approach to the whole project, I'd say, in terms of a new respect for the cycling industry. And, then, and I, I realised right there and then that you know, the, bike, the bike at that stage, that standard, is not just a set of triangles and wheels. On. You don't enter into something like this unless you feel you've got the people behind you to deliver what you want. But none of this would have ever happened without a team of people like that. When you work in Formula One, there's a an attitude which you you don't really see anywhere else, I don't think. And I've worked, you know, I've worked in many different places. It, it does give you a mindset that nothing is ever a real problem. You just get on with the job and you do it, and you work all the hours it takes to get the job done. Because you're part of this really incredible team of people who deliver this incredible thing. So that that's a mindset that's kept gets me out of bed every day. But also was what drove my team. When we sat down and sort of um, specked out the bike, there was, there was two very different projects here. There was the bike, so the, the, the chassis, if you will, 
and then more importantly was the electronics. So really that hadn't really been done before. And what had been done was power measurement, but you know, I'm, I'm going to stick my neck out here. So what had been done in power measurement at that time was was not good. So you know, we were comfortable in the pockets that whatever we did was going to be a hundred times better than what was out. There. And that was our bread and butter business. You know, that's what we did every day. You know, so torque measurement, power measurement was just another form of what we did for Formula One suspension and all kind. You know, we were doing we were way ahead of the curve on that one. This project was one of those things where I. I'd had in my head a budget, and very quickly that just... It was taking a list of things that the rider would probably be interested in, an even bigger list of the things that a trainer would be interested in, and then how we can display all of that to the rider, log it, the post-race analysis, post-rider analysis, sorry, um, and really go crazy. And it's called temperature, for example, and you know, taking a pill to measure his temperature while he's riding, all these kinds of weird, wonderful things. Um, accelerometers, um, gyros, ECG, so not heart rate monitor but an ECG, so full medical grade. Tell the rider where it's going to have a heart attack whilst he's riding, if you, <laughs> you know. We were satisfied with the frame design, the look especially, this was going to be a good starting point. So I pushed the button on the tooling, manufactured I think two or three, two or three bikes, um, built one rode it and it was shocking, absolutely shocking. <laughs> it looked beautiful but it was rubbish, it was absolutely rubbish. And I, I never really bottomed out how that happened. Back to the drawing board, back to the cars, the cab machines. But I guess you could say we learned what was wrong with the bike in the real world. We had a real bike, we knew it was shit and we knew why it was shit. There's nothing like a working prototype to tell you where you've gone wrong. You, know, you, can do, you can look at the screen all day long but when you've got a piece of hardware in front of you, manufactured a second iteration of the frame and we put that together uh, reasonably quickly and rode it and we, yeah everyone that rode it within the team was you know there was a quite a lot of what the fuck moments which was cool and I mean, you know but when you see those kind of reactions to something you you know <laughs> you've pained over for, uh, for a long long time it's quite a nice feeling Probably not as good as the Savannah was, but it was up there. It was up there and it was our first go. Um, but more importantly to us, it looked better. It looked aesthetically better than anything. So we finished the project and we did some press. <clears throat> um, it ended up in the Science Museum actually. That was its first real sort of spotlight moment, if you like. Everyone that came to look at it in the flesh, journalists, whatever they were, but you know, some of the things we did with the bike, like disc brakes, everyone laughed at us about doing disc brakes, but hey, you know, here we are buying disc brake bikes today. Yeah. And you know, back then it was obvious, why wouldn't you have disc brakes? If you're tanking down a mountain at you know, 90 k's an hour, I wonder I'm gonna stop. And we all sort of sat down for a few months and just got on with our normal day-to-day -day business. We were supplying Aston Martin uh, road cars with electronics because we were working on the 177 project at the time of the steering wheel. A, a casual conversation came up in a meeting about the bike. Suddenly we had, we had a, a commission, first commission if you like, for the bike. It wasn't, you know, previously no intention of selling a bike to, guys, would you make a bike for us? So this was like the beginning of um, thinking about, right, so we are now selling a bike, we need to come up with a brand. We need to start thinking about our brand. Um, so at that time, the brand was BF1, because effectively our audience at that point was high-end automotive, so it kind of fitted with our, our, our marketplace. We took the opportunity to upgrade the electronics significantly, the power cranks as well, and, and obviously when we did the, the cockpit area, we tried to um, replicate the sort of the face of the 177 car. And that was the beginning of, of me starting to think that well, maybe, maybe we should consider a more mainstream road bike. So at that point we started thinking about a brand and we spent months and months trying to come up with a name. So we found it out to an agency and they came back to us within a week with Factor. I think it's quite a cool brand name actually. And they'd highlighted the C and the T for cardio training because that's essentially what the bike was. It's all about the athlete as much as the bike. We'll go with that and then they came up with the icon which is like that a mountain with a road coming down, that kind of thing. 
So we just went with it. I, mean, I didn't give it a second thought really at the time that the fact would ever become anything that it is today. It was never, never entered my head. When I look back at that and I think where Factor is today, where Rob's done, it's quite, it's quite funny. Rob can tell us the owner of Factor Bikes now was kind of at that time the go-to guy for manufacturing composite frames. A lot of the premium brands that you see today. And a lot of those premium brands that he was building for at the time were becoming swallowed up by these big consortiums. And so the engineering freedom that he had in each one of these brands was becoming more and more limited. I was approached um, by a, a friend of Rob's um, whose opening gambit was Rob's looking to buy a brand and wants to break the brand. And he really likes what he's done with you. In fact, and would you be interested in selling it? We say, and I, the, the notion of selling the business has never come on. I, when I stopped, it was just stopping, not right, let's sell it, because there was nothing really to sell, in my opinion. I would not give it to anyone else, basically. I would have just scrapped the whole thing, but because it's wrong. And it's up the new factory and everything, so it was no brainer for me. So I, well, I gave it to him. I just handed it to him. Being an engineer myself, but, uh, when, when I saw the pain we went through, and I saw what he did in like a fraction of the time, it was like, ooh, yeah, very knowledgeable guy. So you imagine giving that guy what he needed to do his own bike. That's why Factor is what it is today, because of because Acres and Roll, but because of the what he's built in terms of facilities, manufacturing and everything else, he's able to just turn the screw. He's got no one to ask to, you know, got no other brand to ask first for that, he's his own boss and that makes a huge difference. And I think that's come through in, 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 in fact bikes now, the bikes that you see now are because of that. I never imagined that it would be what it is today, even with Rob, if you certainly I mean, Rob took some very huge risks, put back to him up there on a pedestal, um, but it also changed people's opinion of, of factoring so much as it wasn't this like you know, you know some brand it was a bike that could win stages in the Tour of France. And, you know, it, I remember watching um, Bardet live actually in that stage, and it suddenly it suddenly dawned on me that you know I had something to do with that sort of thing. So it's quite cool, very cool. There I am in retirement and Rob contacts me and, I'm, and the first thing I said to him said, Rob, it says if I do anything with you, it has to be on a direct sell and his instant answer is yes, that's what we want to do. So yeah, it was a very easy decision really. I mean, just go to work with Rob again, you know. He's a good guy, you know, he is so knowledgeable and he's always open to ideas, he does listen to different viewpoints and stuff. It's a new challenge, got me back out of bed in the mornings. Uh, but of course it's factor, which is something I was I felt part of. For me, the challenge is making factors successful in the UK, and it's all growing, it's all going really, really well. And I think the time was, you know, the time was perfect for the brand, particularly in the UK. We're, we're starting to interact with a lot more people. The feeling of uh, sort of community starting to be established. Meeting people, allow them to experience products, so test rides, and being able to offer them, you know, a, a factory, Levels of service, you know, so the team, the coffee, the banter, the, just the whole. And then, secondly, when they do leave the factory, you want them to leave feeling comfortable that there is a place, a safe place to come back for servicing questions. And at the moment, which I hope to change, but at the moment I can pretty much name every single client I've dealt with, but you know, I'd like to be able to not do that because there's so many. You want to stay in touch and, you know, make sure these people are comfortable with their experience. and feel comfortable owning it afterwards. You know, that's the first thing everyone who leaves here appreciates what they've just bought and and so that, that makes me feel good. And the only thing I'm asking is the client, the customer. So 